Well, good morning and welcome to another morning manna here at Lighthouse. Uh, let's go ahead and open in prayer. Father God, we thank you again so much for the day that you've uh, created, um, that we are here, our, our lungs are filled with air, Father, and that uh, your word is here for us. It offers uh, instruction and, and encouragement and everything that we need, Lord, to live for you. So um, help us as we uh, open your word today so that we are encouraged and instructed, and we pray for that, Lord, in, in Jesus' name. Amen. So today we're going to spend a, just a little bit of time um, in Matthew. Um, I was listening to the, the audio book of that, and there was a, a concept or a, a verse here that really struck me, and, and it caused me to, to ponder. So I thought I would share that with you. Really, the concept um, is this idea of what, what is the, the contrast or the difference between knowledge and understanding? And so I thought it was interesting to go to, go to the Word and dig in a little bit to see what, what the Word has to say about that. So uh, we're here in Matthew chapter 15, and this is this, this real meaty part of Matthew where we, we have a lot of red words if you have that kind of Bible. If not, it's just a lot of dialogue between Jesus and his disciples, between Jesus and Pharisees, um, Jesus and Gentiles. And so there's a, a lot of dialogue. And so Jesus is laying a, laying a lot of stuff down that people are having a hard time picking up, if you know what I mean. And so he's um, going through um, some of his parables um, and people aren't getting it. And even his disciples are asking him, What's up with these parables? And so we'll, we'll read here in chapter 15, verses 12 through, through 20. And then his disciples came to him and said, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this saying? And this saying was back in, in, in verse 8 when Jesus says, these people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. And so he was talking about the, the, the Pharisees being hypocrites um, when they were giving him a hard time about his um, disciples not washing their hands in the ritual way that they were washing their hands. And, and, and he called them out um, for, for being hypocrites because of the way they mistreated their parents. And so um, he, he continues here. And, and so his disciples are like, man, those, those Pharisees were really offended at what you had to say. Like they were worried about it, and Jesus wasn't. Um, he goes on in verse 13 and said, Every plant which my fa heavenly Father has planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind, leaders of the blind, and if the blind leads the blind, both will fall into a ditch. So really what Jesus is saying, he said, don't worry about them. Yeah, they're worked up and offended because they're hearing these hard truths that, that they don't understand. Um, even though they're hearing what I'm saying, it's going kind of in one ear and out the other, and, and they don't understand what, what I'm getting at. So just leave them be. Leave them in their own blindness um, and let them fall into a ditch. And so Peter's... Um, scratching his head at this point too. He's like, well, then can you, in verse 15, then Peter answered and said to him, explain this parable to us. And Jesus said, are you also still without understanding? And so we don't know the tone that, that Jesus um, is using here, but, but we're pretty much smack dab in the middle um, of, you know, the, the account of uh, Matthew here. And, you know, the, the disciples have been with Jesus for a lot of miracles and a lot of his teaching and they've, they've hang out with him daily uh, for quite a period of time so I don't know if Jesus was um, frustrated I think I might be so so maybe that leads me to believe that he wouldn't be but but he's still bringing home the point of Peter you're you're not able to understand me yet so let me help you and then he continues in verse 17 do you not understand that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and is eliminated. But those things which proceed from the mouth come from the heart, and they defile a man. For out of the heart proceeds evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. 
but to eat without unwashed hands does not defile a man. And so Jesus, again, brings this fine point um, from what he called the, the Pharisees hypocrites because the Pharisees weren't hypocrites, uh, weren't, um, weren't bad people, or they weren't, you know, in our day and age, Pharisee is, is seen as a, a pejorative or a put down. Um, so, but they weren't hypocrites because they didn't know the law. They weren't hypocrites because they didn't want to follow it. They were hypocrites because they didn't understand. So there's a, the difference there is even though they knew the law, they knew what the requirements were that were extra biblical, uh, they didn't have any idea about the spirit of the law, what the, what the understanding of the, the meaning of the law was. And as Jesus would go on to say, he didn't come to abolish the law. Far from it, he came to fulfill it. And so he's not negating the law, and he's not even saying for us today that the law doesn't matter. But what he's saying is, is there's a spirit of the law that we need to understand. And so he's trying to explain this to Peter here, who um, has at least the courage uh, to ask and say, hey, I don't understand. Can you help me? And I think that's an instructive encouragement for us today, too, is there are going to be things that we read that we don't understand, but to kind of leave it there or pretend like we understand or to just rigidly um, do something without really understanding why, I think is the point here that Jesus is getting to is uh, he wants to bring us to a place of understanding. And so that begs, that begs the question is, what does he want us to understand? And I think as he goes through these parables, it's pretty clear, even if we go all the way back to to chapter 10, and we read in verses 29, uh, are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin? And not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will. But the very hairs of your head are numbered. So do not fear, therefore, you are of more value than of many sparrows. And so I think that's one of the things that, that Jesus wants us to understand is that the, the, the word that he's given us um, is to show us how valuable we are to him and to give us, you know, a glimpse of his love for us, not only in, in these parables, but what these parables and his life was leading up to, which was, uh, you know, obviously, um, you know, in the gospels here was the cross and the resurrection and his ascension and, and later his his promise to return. And so all of these things are a great encouragement. All of these things are things that Jesus wanted us um, to understand, not just know. We can read here, you know, we can read, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him would not perish, but would have eternal life. So we can memorize that, right, in, in probably, you know, second or third grade. But, but to understand what that means for us personally is really um, is, is really important, and that's why Jesus values understanding over knowledge. Um, essentially, he wants us to trust him and not in our own understanding, right? Proverbs, trust not, lean not on your own understanding. Um, he wants us to lean on him and, and his sure word and in his accomplishments and, and not our own. And so as, as we go through here, um, you know, if, if we can have that mindset of let's, let's not just try to memorize a bunch of Bible verses or a bunch of Bible facts about who begot who or which of the disciples became first or who are the 12 disciples, any of those things. If we just look at, at, at God's word from an under, understanding of this is really God trying to reveal to us how much he values us and loves us. Um, he's revealing to us his holiness and, and righteousness and the, the plan for our salvation. And so to me, that's great encouragement. I hope it is for you. Um, if it has been, you can like and share and uh, message friends with that. But um, we're, we're close today here uh, with just a, another quick word of encouragement that, that, that God's word is sure and it's true and he loves you. And so God bless you and have a, a great rest of your day.